welcome back my dear friends a good evening to one another so we have discussed about superficial palmar arch yesterday and today we are going to discuss about the deep palmar arch so when you see the deep palmar arch how it is formed and which artery is contributing to complete that deep palmar arch that we are going to discuss now so before going to explore this please subscribe to my channel thank you dear friends so today's topic is deep palmar arch so deep palmar arch we are going to discuss so coming to this deep palmar arch how it is going to form before going to explore that every one of us must understand the course of radial artery so without knowing that it is very difficult to understand why because it is simply if you say that it is present deep to this flex attendance it is not enough then how the radial artery is going to enter into the hand that every one of us have to understand so we have seen that so i am just flexing my arm flexing my elbow and trying to show the forearm over here so try to see here at the elbow at the neck of the radius the brachial artery is going to bifurcate into radial artery laterally ulnar artery medially now the radial artery which is extending down and reaching to the lower part of the wrist there it is what is going to happen here is this radial artery it is giving a branch called as superficial branch of radial artery so that superficial branch of radial artery which is entering into the hand which is entering into the hand what happened to the main radial artery is it is radial artery which is running towards posteriorly it is running posteriorly now it is entering into a depression which is present at the lower aspect of the extensor compartment of forearm called as anatomical snuff box so this radial artery which is going to enter into this anatomical snuff box then after that it is running posteriorly and enters into this first dorsal interosseae so as you all know that first dorsal interosseae is a bipinnate muscle so between the two heads of first dorsal interosseae it is entering into the hand through this it is passing between the two heads of the first dorsal interosseae and enters into the hand then what is going to happen in the hand is after it enters into the hand it is running it is running deep to this oblique head of adductor pollicis deep to this oblique head of adductor pollicis then between uh, and superficial to this transverse head of adductor pollicis and it is running towards medially then it is going to anastomose with the deep branch of ulnar artery and completes the deep palmar arch so in our previous class yesterday we have discussed about superficial palmar arch so how it is formed so the superficial palmar arch it is formed by superficial branch of ulnar artery so the ulnar artery is going to bifurcate under the palmaris brevis and the superficial branch which is running towards laterally towards laterally and that is going to communicate with the superficial branch of radial artery now we have discussed about the superficial branch of radial artery before it enters into the anatomical snuff box it is giving a branch called as superficial branch of radial artery with that artery the superficial branch of ulnar artery it may it may anastomose with that and completes the superficial palmar arch or if it is the arch is not formed by communicating with the superficial branch of radial artery that superficial branch of radial artery which is going to communicate with the two other arteries it may be two other arteries one is arteria radialis indices arteria princeps pollicis these two are the branches of the deep palmar arch that we are going to discuss now so let me explain about it so i am going to draw the hand over here so you no need to worry about it so this is our little finger this is our little finger then this is our ring finger and then this is our middle finger okay and this is our index finger yes yes so i am drawing the hand over here yes here so what i have missed i have just missed the thumb let me draw you the thumb let me draw the thumb yes this is your thumb so this is how our hand is present as already have discussed about this radial artery 
So the radial artery which enters into the lower aspect of our hand. So which aspect I am drawing now? This is our palmar aspect. Palmar aspect. Then the radial artery before it enters into the anatomical snuff box posteriorly it is giving a small branch that is, it is called as superficial branch of radial artery. This is nothing but superficial branch of radial artery. Then the deep, the main trunk which is running posteriorly and enters into the anatomical snuff box, this is the main trunk and it is entering into the anatomical snuff box, then it is running posteriorly and then enters into the two heads of first dorsal interossei and enters into the hand like this and enters into the hand and here it is giving the branches one is arteria princeps pollicis and then arteria radialis indices and then this is running towards medially and this is going to communicate with the deep branch of ulnar artery so we have I have shown the deep branch of ulnar artery this is superficial and no I am not drawing the superficial branch of ulnar artery so that to avoid confusion and I am drawing the deep branch of ulnar artery and it is going to come run laterally and here is radial artery which is running towards like this and this is how the deep palmar arch is going to form so let me label it clearly this is superficial branch superficial branch of ulnar and this is your deep branch of ulnar deep branch of ulnar and this is your main trunk of radial artery and this is your arteria princeps pollicis and this is your arteria radialis indices so you don't need to worry about these words there is nothing but uh, princeps pollicis means artery arteria princeps pollicis main trunk which is supplying to the thumb on either adjacent sides of the thumb and this is the arteria radialis indices which is supplying to the lateral aspect of your index so let me number it so that it will be yes it will be clear so this is the arteria radialis indices which is supplying to the lateral aspect of index so in our superficial palmar arch, what we have discussed is, we have seen the superficial palmar arch which is running towards laterally and that superficial palmar arch which is going to communicate with this superficial branch of radial artery and uh, completes the superficial palmar arch. So this is your superficial branch of radial artery. Okay, and this is your main trunk. Main trunk of radial artery. Right, so let me draw a dotted line so that uh, it will be a little clear. So this dotted line showing the superficial palmar arch. Yes, this is your dotted line is showing the superficial palmar arch. Superficial palmar arch. So. We have seen the branches from the superficial palmar arch are one is medial digital branch, then three common palmar digital arteries. So these three common palmar digital arteries where they're running. So uh, this one also I just it, it will become a small review so that it is it will be clear. So this is a medial digital branch, and second can find the three common palmar digital arteries, three common palmar digital arteries. So these three common palmar digital arteries they enter into the clefts, second, third and fourth clefts that they are going to divide into the proper palmar digital arteries that we have seen in our previous class. It is a quick review so that you can understand easily. Very good. 
So this is the proper Palmar digital artery. This is not a line which I am showing you here. So here you can see the common Palmar digital arteries and they are going to bifurcate into proper Palmar digital arteries. They are supplying to the adjacent sides of the fingers. So superficial branch it doesn't supply to the lateral aspect of the index finger. That it is going to supply by the deep Palmar arch and its branch. Which branch? Arteria radialis indices. Arteria radialis indices. So this is how the deep Palmar arch is going to form. Then uh, I just want to tell you the branches of this, branches of the deep palmar arch, branches of the deep palmar arch. Now coming to the branches of, now coming to the branches of deep palmar arch. So I have just rubbed it off, the superficial palmar arch now, so that there will be no confusion. So what I am going to draw is, so between the oblique head and the transverse head of rectal pollicis, oblique head and the transverse head of rectal pollicis, this radial artery which is giving the branches called as arteria princeps pollicis, assume it is a trunk which has entered into the hand between the two heads of first dorsal interosseae and then it is giving the branches called as arteria princeps pollicis which is supplying to the adjacent sides of the thumb. Then arteria radialis indices which is extending towards the lateral aspect of index and supplying to the index finger. Then other branches are, other branches are 3, 1, 2 and 3. So these are 3 palmar metacarpal arteries. Remember the name? These are palmar metacarpal, metacarpal arteries. 3, 3,Metacarpal arteries. So these three common, uh, sorry, three Palmar metacarpal arteries which are running towards the clefts, which are running towards the clefts. So these three Palmar metacarpal arteries, they are going to communicate, they are going to communicate with the three common Palmar metacarpal arteries which are the branches of superficial palmar arch where you have seen that so they are run, they have run towards the clefts they are run they have run towards the clefts so the superficial palmar arch which is present anterior to the flexor tendons anterior to the flexor tendons so the common metacarpal arteries which are running towards the clefts and there they are going to bifurcate and then deep under the flexor tendons means beneath the flexor tendons after separating this superficial palmar arch where we can identify this deep palmar arch. Okay, so this deep palmar arch, the branches are three palmar metacarpal arteries. These three are going to communicate with that three common palmar metacarpal arteries and then it is going to bifurcate. So let me show you once again. So, so this dotted line is showing the, yeah, what are they? Common palmar metacarpal arteries. I just give a code so that it will be clear. Common palmar metacarpal arteries. Okay, one, two, and three. So they are communicating with that, and then they are going to run towards the adjacent of the adjacent sides of the fingers, and then they are going to supply to them. Okay. So this is how the deep palmar arch branches are coming. So these three are the branches. First, we have seen the arterial principles policies supplying to the thumb. Adjacent sides of the thumb, then arteria radialis indices supplying to the lateral aspect of the index, and then three palmar metacarpal arteries. These are the three palmar metacarpal arteries. Then what about the other branches? Other branches are three perforating branches. So here, like this, they are running towards posteriorly. So these are the three. Perforating branches, perforating, three perforating branches. So where they are going is, where they are going is, they are running posteriorly. Let me show you clear. One, two, and three. So these are the three perforating branches which are running posteriorly. They are running posteriorly and then they are going to, uh, they are going to communicate with the dorsal metacarpal arteries, dorsal metacarpal arteries and supplies to the dorsum of the hand, dorsum of the hand. Remember this, yes, last branch which we are going to discuss. So far we have discussed about, so far we have discussed about this 
three palmar metacarpal arteries and then three perforating branches. Then other branch which is coming from this deep palmar arch. So how it is running is, so from this deep palmar arch which is, it is extending proximally, it is extending proximally and this deep branch, deep palmar arch branch is called as recurrent branch. So here you can see that there is nothing but the recurrent branch. So this recurrent branch which is extending proximally runs over the anterior surface of the carpals and it is going to and communicate, it is going to communicate with the anterior carpal branch, anterior carpal branch. So that we will understand the anastomosis around the wrist joint. Now next class we are going to discuss about it, no need to worry. This is called as anterior carpal branch, sorry, anterior carpal branch, anterior carpal branch. So this is how the last branch which is called as the recurrent branch which is extending proximally that is going to communicate with these anterior carpal branches and completes the it completes the supplying to the proximal part of the hand, proximal part of a hand. So that is about the deep palm arch, my dear friends. It is very easy to understand. So once again, you just try to practice the diagrams in your notebook so that it will be easy to understand and it is easy to represent in the examinations. Thank you, dear friends. See you soon with a new class. Thank you.